David. And with this video, I'd like to help you work through lesson three. Now we're assuming that you've gone through lesson one and lesson two of the first beginner level of Piano Skills Foundation series. And now you're ready for lesson three. A couple new things are happening in lesson three, one of which is you're going to start learning how to recognize the notes on the staff. So you'll notice when you get to lesson three that there's going to be a whole new set of um, pages in here about learning how to read notes on the staff. So I want you to know that I've, I've printed all the ones up that you're going to be using through the next several lessons. But in this lesson, you're only going to work on treble clef two pages and bass clef two pages. And I'll be telling you which, which ones of those you need to make a mark on just to, to n know which ones you're working on for lesson three. And then after you get to lesson four, you'll start using all of these sheets. I'm only uh, including them in this lesson so you don't keep on getting them again and again and make your notebook too thick. So every time you use these practice sheets in the future, you're going to have to come back to lesson three to work on them. Just so you know. Anyway, uh, outside of that, I think there's nothing else I need to tell you. You get to do a new exercise in this, in this lesson, so it'll be a lot of fun. So here we go. All right, so now... The first thing on your list for the practice guide, lesson three, is notes on the staff and on the piano. You're basically going to start learning how to recognize where a note that you see on the music staff lands on the piano. Knowing how to name the notes is one thing, and that's helpful, but also knowing how to find it on the piano and, and learn how to do that quickly is what our goal is here. So I'm going to use these flashcards to kind of go through what I call um, anchor notes and the groups that you can learn around certain anchor notes. And then um, you'll see in your packet that you can download for lesson three all these practice sheets. And you're going to use these practice sheets uh, for learning the notes over the next several lessons. And I'm just going to show you the notes and the order that I like to learn them in. So here we go. The top line of treble clef, and treble clef uh, are the notes that you'll generally be playing with your right hand, and treble clef generally is from the middle of the piano on up, so these notes are And then bass clef, the notes that are down in, in this clef, are from the middle of the piano on down. So uh, let's do the treble clef first, and then I'll show you your practice sheet and how to go about using them. I like to uh, teach the notes according to anchor notes. Anchor notes that I have chosen because they're easy to recognize. You can see that this note is on the top line of treble clef. So the top line treble clef is our first anchor note. And you just need to know that if this is middle C right here, which it is, the top line of treble clef is this F right here. Now, once you've learned that anchor note, you know that the top line is F. And you can say to yourself, the top line is F. Then you will easily know the notes around it. For instance... The space right below the top line. This note is in that space that's right below the top line. So the top line was F. This note is in the note right below. So it's E. So let's do that. The top line, F. The space right below it is E. If you know the top line is F, then you'll know that the space above that line, right here, is G. If you knew that the top line was F, then you would know that the next line down from that, see the next line down, you have to skip a note because we're skipping the space note, is D. So these are the four notes in this group. Top line F, that's your anchor note. The space right below it, E. The space right above it, G. And the next line down, D. Get to, the, get to know those four notes, and once you have them learned, then you can start playing through your practice sheet. When you do this practice sheet, starting with the top line, I would suggest don't worry about the rhythms yet. Eventually, you'll get to the point where you can play it through with your metronome and everything, keeping a beat. But for now, I would just name them and play them like this. F, E, F, G, F, D, F. And I just played through that line. And then you can go through and practice the other three lines. All right, so now let's move on to the next group. The next anchor note that I like 
to use is the bottom line of treble clef. So we know the top line, now we need to know the bottom line. The bottom line of treble clef is this E right next to middle C. Here's middle C, E is right down here near that. So here is the bottom line of treble clef. If you know that note, then you should know the space right above it. It's F. If you know the bottom line E, then you should know the space right below it, D. If you know that the bottom line is E, then you should know that the next line up is G. Because you know when you go from line to line, you skip a note. So we skipped over F. So here they are one more time. The bottom line E, the space above that, F, the space below it, D, and the next line up, G. So get to know those four notes too, using the anchor note E. And then as I show you this, you're going to use this practice sheet for that one. The anchor note is E. I'm going to play through this line real quick, naming them. This is what you should do. E, F, E, D, E, G, E. I just played through the top line. And then you can go through and play these other lines, naming and playing the notes. Naming them just really helps you put it into your mind. All right? So now let's move on to the, the uh, two groups. By the way, on this, week's, on this week's practice sheet, I told you, just do two groups. Those are the two groups that I just showed you. And, and that's why I put a little star next to these. You could do this. Star the sheets that you're going to use this week. Eventually, and by next time, you'll have all of them. But um, just the first two groups. So I, I put a star next to the treble clef, anchor note F, and treble clef, anchor note E. If you star those, say, okay, just this week, get to know those first. And then next week, you can add the rest of them. Um, let's go to bass clef now. In bass clef, we'll start with the bottom line, the anchor note bottom line, G, right here. So here's middle C. This is G. So if you know the bottom line is G, then you should also know that the space above it is A. If you know the bottom line is G, then you'll know that the space, if I can get this, the space right below that line is F. If you know that the bottom line is G, then the next line up from there, you have to skip a note from G, you go up to B. All right, does that make sense? So I'm going to go through those real quick. This is G, the bottom line. The space above it is A. The space below the bottom line is F. And the next line up is B. And of course, your practice sheet looks like this. And I'd put a little star next to this star so you know what you're working on this week. The bottom line, let me go through those real quick. You're gonna, I'm going to play them and name them the way you should. It's G, A, G, F, G, B, G. And that is the little group of four notes around the G anchor note. Okay? Now the next anchor note is the top line of bass clef. The top line of bass clef is very close to middle C. Here's middle C. This is the top line, A. So, if you know that the top line of bass clef is A, then you should know the space below it, G. If you know that the top line is A, then you should know the space above it, it's B. If you know that the top line is A, then you should know the next line down, where is it? There it is, is F because you have to skip a note down from the top line to the next line. So now let me go through those real quick. The top line is A, the space below it, G, the space above the top line, B, and the next line down, F. So those are the four notes of this group. And your practice sheet looks like this. So put a little star next to this one. This is the one you're going to do this week. Okay. The top line, A, I'm going to just play through these real quick. A, G, A, B, A, F, A. And that's how you do that, and then practice the rest of those lines. If you do this on a daily basis, you'll get to know this group, and this group, and bass clef, as well as this group, whoop, this group, and this group, and treble clef. And then next time, you can work on the rest of them. I'll show those in the next lesson. So, good luck with that. Starting to get to know your notes. That's awesome. All right. So, the next thing on your practice guide for lesson three is the stepping and skipping exercise along with your arpeggios and your cadence. 
Now, the great thing is, now after the first two lessons, you hopefully know all your chords really well. The one, the four, the five, the five, seven, and the one. So now, I don't have to spend time showing you those. If you can go back to lesson two or lesson one to learn those. Um, I'm going to play straight through your exercises the way you should be doing them. Today's uh, new exercise is called the stepping and skipping etude, or stepping and skipping exercise. And uh, you don't need to look at the music. I just put the music in there so you can kind of see what it looks like. But I'm just going to show you the pattern, and then I'll play through it. You'll notice that the top tempo I put is 96, so I'm going to play it at 96. Um, you probably should start down at slower speeds when you first learn it. Um, easiest way to learn this pattern at first is to go ahead and just do it um, with the hand separately. So I'm going to show you the pattern first, right hand and left hand, and then I'll do both and do the whole thing. So here it goes. This is the stepping and skipping exercise. You do stepping up, stepping all the way back down, and then skipping up and down. And you want to keep it nice and smooth the whole time. Notice how I'm dropping my fingers in at a nice tall angle, and I'm keeping my fingers firm. And every time I play a note, I lift that next finger up a little bit so I can throw it into the keys. Now the left hand plays it the same way. like this with both hands and like I said I'm probably going a little fast for you at the beginning here so you could do uh, here's here's uh, 66 the beginning tempo that I wrote down I did not do a very good job of staying with the beat All right so that could be a good beginning tempo for you but by the end of the week of practice hopefully you'll be up to 96 so you can see the pattern. You keep moving it up, moving it up, moving it up. And then, once you get to C position, and you've done, okay, now I'm going to head down the other direction. So I start on the top note. Then I move down. pattern until you get back down to C position. On the very last one, I like to add a walk down at the end. I don't know if I wrote that into the music. I've I haven't looked at this music in a long time. Um, yeah, I did. Da, 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 da. Yep. So here's what it is. The very last pattern. And then walk down to make it sound like it's finished at the very end. If you want to, you don't have to, all right? Then move right on into your arpeggios. C, E, G, C, E, G, C, E, G, C, E, G. You're still saying those note names, I hope. G, E, C, G, E, C, G. You probably just one more week of saying the note names like this. C, F, A, C, F, A, C, F, A. This is the four chord. C A F C A F C A F C A F C then the five chord B D G B D G B D G B D G B G D B G D B G D B G D B then the five seven B F G to the one chord C E G C E G C E G C E G C G E C G E C G E C G E C those are your arpeggios
arpeggios. Now, if you can't play through them smoothly like that yet, don't worry. You could probably stand to do slower tempos or um, and or working on blocking like that five chord. A lot of people have trouble with that at first. So I think I showed you in a previous video that you could do blocking of them. If you block them like this several times and get good at moving the chords just as a solid chord, then playing the arpeggios is easier. So if you're having trouble getting your arpeggios going, um, make, make some effort to practice with blocking them. Um, after that, you'll notice after you do your exercise in your arpeggios, the last thing on your list here is the cadence. So I'm going to do the cadence every chord, right hand, left hand, both four times. I'm going to keep the same 96 tempo. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Back to the one chord. Notice how I'm trying to keep my hand nice and tall. I'm just feeling the weight of my arm dropping onto the keys. I'm trying not to let my arm tense up at all. A lot of people, when they first learn these chords, they get all tense while they're playing. We're trying to keep your arm loose. Okay, the left hand's turn. So I'm just feeling the weight of my arm drop into the keys through my fingertips and trying not to tense up. Counting one, two, three, four. You should be counting two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Back to the one chord. Two, three, four. And then I hold. Now both hands at the same time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Then the four chord. Two, three, four. One, two. Back to the one chord. Seven, two, three, four, one, two. Then I'm back to the one chord. Two, three, and then just hold the last one. Two, three, four, off. So there are your exercises for this week. And like I said, you can keep the metronome at 96 unless something poses a trouble, then you can slow it down. Uh, but uh, if you do this every day, you're teaching your hands some very important skills and developing your piano ability. Good luck with that, All right? So the next thing on your practice guide for lesson three is Twinkle Twinkle. And you'll see that nothing has changed this week on Twinkle Twinkle. Uh, still want to practice it with your metronome. Play it right hand, left hand, both. Um, blue on the black notes, do it on the white notes. I'm going to save a little time on today's video just by playing through it with both hands to sort of remind you how it's going. Um, the thing I want you to focus on now that you know the tune pretty well, uh, I'll move it up to 120, is... I want you to practice making sure you're connecting your notes whenever you can. Every time you move from one note to the next note, make sure you're connecting. Now I did put a kind of a not great fingering in where you do this. There really can be no connecting on that, right? But then every time you move to another note, make sure you connect your notes, make them smooth. You cannot connect repeated notes very well, but you can connect whenever you walk from note to note. So just observe how tall my hands are and I'm dropping in and how I'm connecting my notes whenever I move. Today I'm going to spare you my bad singing. Though I think you should probably sing along as you play. left hand both. I just did both to save time. And then I'm going to move it to the white notes. So I'm going to do right hand, left hand, both on these. You're going to do right hand, left hand, both. I'm just doing both. Try to keep my hands nice and tall. I'm feeling the weight of my arms going into the keys. Keeping everything smooth and musical. twinkle twinkle and you could be anywhere between 80 and 120 hopefully by the end of the week you're up at 120 good luck with that okay so the next thing on your lesson three practice guide the last thing are your two reading exercises so i'm going to show you how to practice these um 
you'll notice that it always says right hand and left hand, and then both three perfect. You do not need to do the right hand and left hand separately on pieces where there are no hands playing together. On, on this one, you'll see the hands play together on the very last note, but that doesn't mean you have to practice hands separately. So I'm going to show you practicing this piece, each line, three perfect. We're always going to go from the first note of, of one line to the first note of the next one. That way they're linked together. You're going to start at a nice slow 72 at the beginning of the week, and by the end of the week, you'll hopefully be practicing up at the tempos that I'm going to show you. Now, notice the hand position. On this one, the left hand has a fifth finger on the bottom note of the three black notes. And then the second finger would be on that white note right there, but it never gets used in this piece. And your thumb is on the bottom of the two black notes. Right hand, similar position an octave higher. Thumb is on the bottom of the three blacks, and your right and pinky is on the uh, bottom of the two blacks. Again, your fourth finger would play this note, but I don't think there's any white notes in this piece. So these are just black notes. So anyway, you can watch your music while I play. This is just to give you an idea what each line sounds like and how to practice it. I'm going to start at 104 for the first line. The first line goes like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, did one perfect and I reach up I go click click on my metronome up to 112 now one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four one and then my hopefully third perfect one is going to be 120 now you have to understand I'm getting three perfects on three tries most of the time and you probably will need at least three or four tries to get a perfect one at each tempo. If you are taking longer than three or four or five tries to get your first perfect one, chances are you're going too fast. So, you know, if you can't get your first perfect one within a few tries, go ahead and drop your metronome even slower, as slow as you need to go to get your perfect ones, and then start from there. Anyway, I'm going to do, let's see, this is my third perfect one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Okay, now I'm on to the second line. Just want to show you where I'm at so you can make, make sure you're following. So I just did the first line. Now I'm going to practice from here all the way to the first note of the next one. Okay, so you can know what it sounds like. Here it goes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. So there's one perfect. I'm going to move up the metronome to 112. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. And then up to 120 for my third perfect. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Now, once I've gotten my three perfect, on the first line, and then the second line, like I just did, I'm going to put those two together before I tackle the third line, because I want to hear what they sound like together. So, from the beginning. One, two, three, four. 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 One. And I didn't mention it yet, but I just want to make sure as you play these, that you're thinking about playing them smoothly, connecting. Once you get somewhat familiar with them, you want to try to make them sound like they're singing, like they're singing a song. So here we go back to 104, my first tempo, and I'm working now on the third line, the third line. And of course, I'm stopping on the first note of the, the, the first note of the bottom line. So I always go from the first note to the first note. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Perfect. Two more. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. There's two. Click, click. I'm up to 120 now. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Now I've done all three of these lines. This one, this one, this one. I've done three perfect. So now I'm going to put them all together. Here we go. One, two, three, four. 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 One. Okay. 
Once in a while, I break into trying to sing the count, but then it goes too high for my voice. I don't want to embarrass myself too much. So if you want to sing the count while you play, that's not a bad idea. Now I'm going to do the bottom line three perfect. Whoops, I better start down at 104. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Off. Now, I think it was a perfect one, so I'm going to go click, click and do it again. Third perfect one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Off. So now I'm going to play the whole thing because I just did all these lines three perfect. Now I'm ready to play through the whole thing at 120. You, of course, will not be at 120 till towards the, the end of your practice week. At the beginning of your week, you'll be going much slower. But here we are at 120. One, two, three, four. wonderful piece called Wandering in Four. Now, once you've practiced that one, you're ready to start the second one, which I'm searching for in my pile of papers up here. Now, four count is a little bit trickier, and I want to um, introduce you to a new rhythm note on this page. Um, I forgot to write about it, but I think you have not had this yet. This is a dotted half note. Dotted half notes get three beats. So you'll be playing along one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. That one holds for three beats. So we'll watch out for that when we get to the third line. This one's a little bit trickier because now your hand is in a position where you have the same position your left hand was in before, but now you get to use the second finger on the white note. And your right hand is on the, the note right next to that. So your thumbs are gonna be like this, okay? And your right hand gets to play a number two on this white note. So the number two fingers are both playing a white note. So it feels a little different than the other position you've been in, but you'll get used to it quickly. I'm going to go through each line and do one nice slow one down at like 72, which is where you should start because I want you to hear how each line sounds nice and slow. And then I'll go up and do my little three perfect routine on each line. So here we go at 72. The first line. It was like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. First note, one. Okay, that was 72. Now I'm going to go ahead and do, let's pretend that was my first perfect. I'm just going to do two more perfects. Jumped up to 112 now. One, two, three, four. top speed you'll be up here by the end of the week now I'm gonna do the second line I like this of doing my first perfect nice and slow so you can really catch it and then I'll do the, the top two tempos so here I go my second line I guess I could point to it <coughs> here is the second line I'm gonna do that three perfect going to the first note of the third line one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. So now I'm going to jump up, pretend like I just got a perfect one at 104, and we're going to do 112. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Third perfect one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Okay, and now as usual, after you've done 
three perfect on these two lines, we're going to put them together. So here's what they sound like together. Second line, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Okay, now I'm on the third line, and then I want to remind you this is the line that has that dotted half note. So this one will get three beats. We'll start here, we'll go all the way to the first note here. One, two, three, four. Oh, wait, 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 sorry. I'm going to make you play it at <laughs> slower speeds, or I'm going to play it for you at 72 so you can really see what's happening. It's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. All right, so hopefully that helps. And now I'm going to jump up to our 112. One, two, three. Our top speed. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Okay, now I'm going to put those three lines together from the beginning. One, two, three, four. I'm going to do the last line. I'll start down at 72 so I can hear it nice and slow. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Off. And now jump up to 112. Towards the end of the week, this is where you'll be on your second perfect one. One, two, three. And then at our top speed, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, off. So now I've done three perfect on all of them, and I'm going to play the whole song. That's your final step. And you can play the whole song as many times as you want after you've practiced it. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. So hopefully you can practice it like that, keeping your eyes on the music, playing it nice and smooth, counting it out loud, and that is all for this time. Good luck with that.